Hello, hello, this is the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Stacey Herbert, how's it going, babe? <laughs> Max, it's going very well. All right, that's cool. Listen, I saw something in the Financial Times that I want to share with everybody out there, okay? It says, fresh moves to unlock loan pool. You see, the world is faced with a global calamity of deflation. And the banker's answer is, let's not deal with the fact that the economic model running the world is basically bankrupt and broken. Let's try to figure out how to refloat these bad loans, as they call them, unlock the loan pool. It says the biggest European banks are seeking to revive the struggling wholesale finance market with a new kind of enhanced security product designed to attract lenders such as pension funds and hedge funds, according to a senior banker. International money markets have periodically seized up since the credit crunch of 2007, and many European banks and savings banks, especially those from Spain, are currently unable to access credit and funds. There's a good reason for it. These banks have parlayed hundreds of billions of dollars of the bad debt into hundreds of trillions of bad debt, into an inverted debt pyramid. And the only way that anybody is ever going to see economic growth again is to let debts that can't be paid go down to zero and we start all over again. But it's, it's going to take, uh, you know, Paul Krugman over the New York Times, he's still wishing for the Keynesian stimulus nirvana approach. It's just not going to work. But let, let, we'll just keep track of this, the insanity of recirculatization and the FT tracking these guys as if they have a brain in their head, which they don't. Let's move on. Stacy, tell us more. Tell us more. Max, while well, you make it sound so easy, this first headline would say, you're wrong. Economics is hard. Don't let bloggers tell you otherwise. This is Kartik Athria from the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond. I argue that neither non-economist bloggers nor economists who portray economics, especially macroeconomic policy, as a simple enterprise with clear conclusions are likely to contribute any insight to discussion of economics and as a result should be ignored by an open-minded lay public. So they even use this word lay public. It just brings us back to medieval times, as you often talk about. Exactly. It's a back to pre-enlightenment, back to the feudal system. And just like the church at that time didn't want the common people to get access to the Bible get, that was printed up and accessible and, and translated into the people's language, the, the, the Politburo of this global Federal Reserve Banking System, the Holy Church, the Orthodox Church, doesn't want the people to know what's really going on with the bloggers or shows like this, Kaiser Report, Markets Finance Scandal, that actually tells the people what's going on. The high priests of the Orthodox economic Mandarin-driven psychosis Fear the truth. And then the other, the high priests of the global economy, the G20 met, and the headline from them reads, G20 decides to have deficits, despite Obama's concerns. <laughs> well, Obama is not really concerned. He was given a script to read from, uh, you know, Paul Krugman over there at the New York Times. He himself knows nothing about economics, unfortunately. Uh, and he refuses to uh, gra grab the bull by the horns like An Angela Merkel over there in Germany. She knows what she's doing. Yeah, but it's also the, it's fake war. They're pretending to the population that we're debating these issues. It's the high priests are having a confab and deciding what is best for the world. But in fact, they're all, they've all transferred the debts to us from the banks, and this is the result. We're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, that brings me to the next headline. RBS tells clients to prepare for monster money printing by the Federal Reserve. Monster? Yes, this is the very same Federal Reserve that just said, you, the people out here, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so Andrew Roberts, credit chief at RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland, I believe which is now owned by the UK taxpayer, he says, quote, we cannot stress enough how strongly we believe that a cliff edge may be around the corner for the global banking system, particularly in Europe, and for the global economy. Think the unthinkable. The Fed is soon going to have to pull the lever on monster quantitative easing. And the numbers they're putting out is like two trillion. Whoop-dee-doo! There's still 100 trillion in bad debt and derivatives. <laughs> Two trillion isn't it? Twenty trillion wouldn't be a spit in the ocean. 
as compared to the bad debt still in the system. The trend is deflation, quantitative easing, there's never going to work. The gold vigilantes, as we've been talking about, are, have sussed this out long ago. Well, in the article also quotes Society General's Albert Edwards, who said, despite what all these uh, guys are telling you at the G20, that we're going to have these austerity measures and do all this stuff, he says that central banks will be forced to print more money. Whatever they say now, they're going to be printing money, given the stinking fiscal mess across the developed world. He said, quote, the response to the coming deflationary maelstrom will be additional money printing that will make the recent QE seem insignificant. Right. Now, George Osborne and David Cameron over in the UK, they made a big thing about, oh, Tories are back in the office. We're going to impose austerity measures. We're going to try to get this country back on a firm foundation. Now, let me tell you something. The social unrest that will come at the tail end of this particular phase of austerity measures will stop them dead in their tracks. They will resume quantitative easing. And the British pound, like the U.S. dollar, and the euro will all crash relative to gold. Well, speaking of gold, that's in my next headline. Talk to me about gold, and I want to do a better cheek pop. That, that's a proper cheek pop <laughs> right there. The sound man is saying yes on the cheek pop. Gold price, a bubble waiting to pop. This is Rory Robertson from Macquarie Bank in Australia. He says rather than worrying about U.S. Treasuries or Australian house prices, Quote, he doesn't see a bubble in either of those assets for fundamental reasons. Punters should be skeptical of gold around 1250 an ounce, almost quintuple its early 2001 price of U.S. dollars 260. Let's take a little look at this chart from Steve Keen. Yeah, the number one economist in the world, Steve Keen. Tell the people. Inflation-adjusted house prices. If you look at the blue line there, you see Japan, and you see their bubble rise up into the 80s and then crash from 1990, and it's still continuing down. The red line, that's the U.S., and you see the bubble that's popped since 2006. The black line is just unbelievable. Look at that. That's Australia. Those are Australian house prices, and this is... The same guy saying that this is not a bubble in Australia. He's saying that gold is. Which, Max, takes me to this chart from Casey Research. 2010 gold price? What bubble? As you can see, the orange line is the 1970s gold bull that turned into a bubble. The black line is the NASDAQ bull market that turned into a bubble. And the yellow line at the bottom, that's the modern day the uh, gold bull market. And you can see it's nowhere near bubble proportions compared to other bubbles. Who wrote this? This is Macquarie uh, Bank Chief Economist Rory Robertson. He's the one that uh, won the bet against uh, Steve Keen. Lucky, lucky, <laughs> Just lucky. on the timing of the housing bubble crash. That what, even a blind pig finds an acorn every now and then. <laughs> Let me explain something to you, Rory. There's a product out there called Thorazine. It's an antipsychotic medication. You need to prescribe yourself massive quantities immediately. Well, I think the lithium might be cheaper from Afghanistan. Well, after <laughs> the U.S. totally uh, blows another trillion in Afghanistan trying to get all their lithium out, the prices should come down, yeah. <laughs>